Welcome to today's episode of the B-Movie Club. I'm your host, Kevin. This week we'll be doing the 2003 action comedy thriller, The Italian Job, starring Marky Mark Wahlberg, Charlize Theron, Donald Sutherland, Jason Statham, Edward Norton, the list goes on and on. For those of you joining us for the first time, each week in the B-Movie Club, I discuss certain guilty pleasures or forgotten cl uh, classics of the past. Go ahead and go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club, and give us the thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our page on YouTube, Kevin D, that's me. And don't forget to tweet me on Twitter at The B Movie Club. Don't forget to spread the word, won't you? The Italian Job. In this movie, Charlie Croker and his team of thieves are in Venice, Italy planning to steal $35 million in gold bars. In a very elaborate scheme, a uh, little bait and switch action, uh, where they draw off the guys who are guarding the money by leading them to think that they've already stolen it. So they're chasing them. There's this chase uh, through the canals in Venice. Splash, splash. But little do they know, the gold was still at uh, the building where it was supposed to be. They basically dropped it down, crash, crash, through the floor. And it looked like it had fallen into a boat, I guess. A huge safe crashing into a boat <laughs> down three floors. But nevertheless, while they're off, they're underneath the water, cracking the safe. It's all very complicated. Basically, they're thieves, but they have like an ethic. They don't use guns, okay? It's a lot of bait and switch, you know, cracking the safe, things like that, okay? So essentially we're supposed to root for these guys. So they're very successful, they got their money, they're driving it away, they're in the Italian Alps, toasting their good fortune. But spoiler alert, there's a double cross. One of their own, Edward Norton, turns on them, brings his own guys in there, they do use guns, steal the gold, and shoot poor Donald Sutherland. God, uh, who is, Donald Sutherland plays a guy named John Bridger. He was kind of the, the older, wise, and thief who's the mentor to uh, Charlie Croker, played by Mark Wahlberg, who's like the, the up-and-coming uh, leader of the gang kind of thing. So John Bridger, uh, he's shot and killed. The rest of them... They drive off and crash into uh, the icy lake. Edward Norton's shooting at them, but it appears that they're dead. Of course, we know they survived. Um, so now, a year later, um, Charlie has discovered where uh, uh, the evil Edward Norton <laughs> is. He's got their gold, but they want the revenge. Unfortunately, no one could crack a safe like John Bridger, Donald Sutherland. So they go and track down his daughter, who uh, also works as a safe cracker, but she works for uh, law enforcement agencies. She's a uh, vault technician. She uh, is an expert on safes uh, for, I don't know, basically she helps the FBI if they need to crack a safe. She'll help them out. She's a law-abiding citizen, basically. She's not a criminal. But because, uh, you know, the death of her father. Um, Mark Wahlberg is able to convince her, hey, you know, help us out, we'll get revenge. It's not about the money, wink, wink. It's more about getting revenge on this guy who betrayed us and murdered your father. So now they've tracked him down. He li he's living in L.A. now, living the high life uh, in a fancy mansion. He's got a fancy car, fancy stereo, fancy TV, you know. Good stuff. So they've, they've tracked him down. They've got the whole gang together. You've got Charlie, who's the mastermind. Stella, who will be the safe cracker. Jason Statham plays Handsome Rob, who's the wheel man. He's the guy driving the cars. Uh, Seth Green plays Lyle, who's like the computer expert, who can do all sorts of interesting things with computer stuff. And they've got uh, Most Deaf, who plays left ear, who's the explosive expert. So teams together, they're going to figure out a plan to get to him. So, but 
they find the mansion that he's living in, but he's got guards, he's got wild dogs, uh, he's got, you know, uh, a crazy security system, he's got the most expensive vault on the map, uh, so they gotta get some inside intel. So they have Stella dress up like a cable <laughs> repair person, because as we all know, all uh, cable repair people look like Charlize Theron. No offense to cable repair people out there. Uh, he doesn't know that she's Bridger's daughter. So she dresses up. She goes into the house to check out his TV and his internet because they've they cut the, the, uh, the cables. Uh, so she's in there checking the place out. Okay, now I know what to do. But they need him out of the house. Luckily... Uh, Edward Norton is obviously interested in Charlie Theron, so he, you know, starts hitting on her and asks her out. So in kind of a trick, they'll like get him out of the house to meet her for a drink or dinner or whatever. And while he's out, they'll swoop in there and uh, steal the the gold. And here's the problem, though: as they're pulling up to pull off the heist. There's a big party going on across the street, which is often what happens. There's like, you know, valet guys, there's, you know, caterers. There, there'll be too many witnesses when they're blowing the gates and, I don't know, taking out the, uh, the guards and, in a fashion like that. So now she actually has to meet him, meet Edward Norton at the restaurant and be charming so she can get a second date so that they can still go through with the plan. Unfortunately, during dinner, she kind of accidentally gives it away, okay? She uses um, a figure of speech that evidently only John Bridger ever used, and Edward Norton uh, you know, picks up on it immediately and rec recognizes, hey, he had a daughter, obviously that's who you are. And then Marky Mark shows up and basically punches out Edward Norton. So, but now... Edward Norton is aware of what's going on. So now he's like, you know what? I'm going to take the gold and we're going to get out of here. So he hires uh, a security squad. He hires three uh, armored cars to haul the gold. Hires a helicopter to follow the gold. But it's like a shell game. Only one of the three armored cars has the gold in it. Okay? The other two are just pretend. There's nothing in there. Okay? So now they're chasing them. They basically got the good guys have got these souped up Mini Coopers. And you say to yourself, if I want to haul gold, would I choose a Mini Cooper to do that? Maybe not. They're very, <laughs> they're very uh, fuel efficient. I guess that's important in this economy. I don't know. Um, but they do some work on them so now that they can go fast and they can haul uh, all the special gold that they'll need. So I don't want to spoil everything. There's a car chase, there's all sorts of fancy computer stuff, there's explosions. I don't want to spoil everything, but spoiler alert, uh, they say that the good guys win, the bad guys lose. Hip hip hooray. Um, <laughs> this movie, as many of you know, is a remake of an original British uh, movie called The Italian Job from 1969, starring Michael Caine playing the role of Charlie Croker. You are only supposed to blow the bloody dolls off. That's the worst Michael Caine impression on earth. I apologize. Uh, but it was a big, big hit back in 1969 and kind of a cultural phenomenon in Great Britain. So they wanted to try to ca uh, tap into that same kind of feel. Um, although there really is no connection between the original Italian job and this new Italian job. Um, Obviously, it, it deals with like a gang of thieves. Uh, it has uh, Mini Coopers, which were big, kind of a, a cultural point in the original 1969 movie. So they brought back the Mini Coopers, kind of the new version of uh, those cars for this one, this kind of connection. And Mark Wahlberg plays Charlie Croker, which is the same role that uh, Michael Caine played in the original movie. Uh, the people who wrote this uh, had actually never seen the original um, version of it and actually made themselves watch it once just to get the tone and the vibe of it. Um, but wanted something totally different. They wanted it to be more of a revenge flick, which again was a departure uh, from the original movie. Um, 
Whereas in the original movie, the Italian job is principally the, like, what the main thrust of the movie is about, about this job that they're doing in Italy, this, uh, this uh, theft. Uh, the Italian job in this movie refers to the initial theft when they originally get the gold that they refer to. So they can refer to, oh yeah, we got the gold back in the Italian job, blah, blah. Um, so they want to do that. Uh, they hired Mark Wahlberg to be in this. They've been a big fan of his since they saw him in Boogie Nights, thought he was an up-and-coming uh, actor. Charlie Theron was another up-and-coming. There's a lot of like uh, n relatively uh, newish uh, stars brought into this. Um, another one, <laughs> this is kind of funny, Edward Norton uh, signed a three-picture deal with Paramount that started with his big breakout movie, Primal Fear. And they had kept coming back to him saying, hey, what about this script, what about this script? He kept turning down the scripts. They basically coerced him and said, you have to do the Italian job. So <laughs> he was not a big fan of this movie. Uh, he, he's great in it. He's a little creepy. He's got this kind of pencil-thin mustache and a little soul patch. So he's, he's perfect, adding his, his villainous uh, quality to this. But it's funny, they, they basically had to force him to be in this. Also, you got uh, Seth Green, who you might remember as the younger brother from uh, Can't Buy Me Love. He's been in a ton of stuff. He plays Lyle, the computer expert, who halfway through the movie starts, says, you need to start calling me the real Napster. Because evidently, his character bio talks about how uh, in college he was the one who invented the Napster share, music sharing uh, website or program. And uh, then the, the guy stole it and made lots of money off it. So that's kind of funny. Jason Statham uh, has gone on to be in The Expendables. He was in uh, tr the Transporter movies. He's been in a ton of stuff. He plays Handsome Rob, the wheel man. Uh, Most Def is a famous hip-hop artist. He plays Left Ear. Uh, he's actually been in a bunch of things as well. Uh, so that's kind of... It's an all-star cast, what can I tell you? And Donald Sutherland, like I said, uh, plays a small role as John Bridger, the mentor who gets killed. Spoiler alert, at the beginning of the movie. So there you go. All-star cast, you can't beat it. Uh, so they wanted, like I said, they wanted to really kind of... Uh, add uh, the Mini Coopers as kind of an extra character, you know, really add that, that flavor. Uh, to do this, they didn't want to use a lot of special effects, as little uh, CGI as possible. So uh, Mark Wahlberg, Jason Statham, and Charlie Theron actually had to go out and um, take driving training to do this kind of elusive uh, stunt driving for over the course of a month. Now, um, they, like, Jason Statham went and had additional training from, like, Formula One drivers, uh, which has served him well in, like, later movies, like the Transporter movies. However, despite all this extra training, they all universally said that Charlize Theron was the best driver of the bunch. Uh, which is funny because she said that she got multiple speeding tickets driving home from work, uh, from filming each day. Uh, for driving 40 miles an hour over the speed limit on like several different occasions because it, you know you get used to driving super fast and then you're just driving home she had to basically recalibrate at the end of each day just kind of okay settle down settle down uh, a lot of stunts they actually had to close down the Hollywood Highlands section uh, of Los Angeles to film uh, like during the day uh, and if you know anything about that area, a lot of traffic anyway. So to basically shut down uh, those sections for long periods of time caused a bit of a ruckus, as I'm sure you'd imagine. Uh, <laughs> this movie is a lot of fun. Like I said, it was a remake of original 1969 movie. And a bizarre coincidence, the 1969 movie was supposed to have a sequel called The Brazilian Job, that, for whatever reason, was never made. Now, when this movie came out, originally released in May, did okay, but the, the, uh, the company, Paramount Pictures, was like, you know, let's re-release it, because we have good thoughts about this. So they re-released it in August, and it actually became a, good, a big hit. Uh, it was more or less critically appreciated, you know, smart action, 
interesting stories, uh, the chemistry between the characters. Um, and they actually also uh, said, you know, we're going to release a sequel on this one called, also called The Brazilian Job. Also didn't happen. Uh, there was a script floating around and then one thing leads to another and then time passes and now it's been over 10 years and if you go on to IMDB it still mentions the Brazilian job but Jason Statham has since said yeah they're probably not going to make it they need to just take it off there I mean it's been years and years so say la vie what are you going to do so two, two different movies bearing the same title both tried to release a sequel of the same name and neither one was able to get it done very sad uh, what else can I tell you about this movie? Like I said before, there was a lot of great action, a lot of great stunts, including a point where they're driving the three Mini Coopers, and they literally go down to a subway line, and they're you know people are jumping out of the way, and they cut in front of a subway car, and they're driving. Another scene, a helicopter is chasing the Mini Coopers, and they actually go underneath. The helicopter flies underneath. Um, a freeway overpass, so it's kind of hovering there, and a lot of good stuff. Another interesting fact, <laughs> uh, Marky Mark, if you know him, not the tallest guy in the world. He actually wore high heels uh, throughout most of the filming to kind of make him a little bit taller. Uh, ironically, in scenes where he was with Donald Sutherland, Jason Statham, and Seth Green, no lifts. Not necessary with those actors, evidently. So, it's Hollywood. What are you going to do? That's how they roll. Uh, currently, this movie has a 73% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Again, it is a lot of fun. Roger Ebert said it's like mindless escapism, but it's clever and it's fun. That's all you ask for, right? So, The Italian Job is streaming instantly on Netflix. Rush out and check it out. And if you haven't seen the original with Michael Caine, I recommend that as well. Check them, check them both out. Compare, contrast. Next week, I'm going to be moving away from the action genre. I'm going to be heading towards the horror genre. For the horror classic, My Bloody Valentine. Good times had by all. Don't forget to go to our page on Facebook, Original B Movie Club. Give us a thumbs up. Go to our page on YouTube and subscribe. And follow me on Twitter, at The B Movie Club. Don't forget to spread the word and tell your homies. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote. And here it is. I trust everyone. It's the devil inside them I don't trust. So there you have it. That's the iconic line that Stella says to, uh, <laughs> to Edward Norton that gives the plot away. So there you have it. Thank you for joining us next week, my bloody Valentine. Be well. Mm -hmm.